Section two, the law of conservation of electric charge, a very important law in physics, and the direction of force between charges. Two very simple but very important concepts. First of all, it's possible to transfer electric charge from one object to another. And we'll show a demo in just a second with an ebonite rod and some animal fur. And what you have to imagine with this ebonite rod is actually uh, colored uh, black, black in color. When you rub that against animal fur, you rub electrons from the fur onto the rod, as we'll talk about. Um, and a body that gains electrons, just like we talked about last, uh, in the last section, will have a negative charge, an excess of negative charge. And a body that loses electrons has an excess of, of positive charge, just like we talked about. Uh, another way to, uh, to, char to transfer charge from one object to another is with silk and a glass rod. In the video, we'll see a lucite rod, which is um, like a plexiglass type of thing. Works the same way. And in this case, you're rubbing the electrons off of the rod and they go into the silk. So in this case, the body is losing electrons. The, uh, the glass rod loses electrons and ends up with an excess of positive charge. So as you can see here, the plus signs. So conservation of electric charge. During any process, the net electric charge of an isolated system remains constant. And uh, physicists refer to anything that remains constant as, as that object being conserved. So this is the, the net electric charge that's going to stay constant through any process. As far as I know, there have been no exceptions to the law of conservation of electric charge. It's a very well-established law. And the second, uh, fourth concept in this chapter is state the direction of the force between charges. You might have learned this in the third grade. Um, like charges repel, unlike charges attract. So you have two positive charges. That's what we call as like charges. So that would be this case here. Uh, two positive charges, you bring them close together, they repel each other. Another case of like charges is negative and negative. That's this case right here. They also repel each other. And unlike charges attract. So that's this case here. So we put, if we put a, a charge on the end of, uh, of each of two strings and we ask whether they repel or attract, and we didn't know what the charges are, well, if they attracted each other, we know that one of them, not sure which one, had to be positive and the other one had to be negative. If they repel each other, then we know that either both of them are positive or both of them are negative. And this simple concept that you've likely heard before, if you haven't heard it before, that's fine, but if you, uh, this simple concept will get you a long way in solving problems. If you've uh, and we will look at uh, fairly complicated arrangements of charges all over the place. But basically what you're going to say is, okay, this one's positive, this one's negative. Um, so what are the forces between them? Well, this is positive, this is negative, they attract. Um, and then maybe between these two pairs, if, uh, this, this one and this one, if, if both of them are positive, then they're going to repel. So the force of this one on this one is that way. And the force of this one on that one is that way. Always um, uh, along the line joining the charges. Okay, here's a demonstration of, uh, of what we've been talking about. And today we're going to demonstrate how to transfer charge from one object to another. The total amount of charge in the universe is probably a constant, but you can, you can transfer charge from one object to another. To demonstrate, this is an ebonite rod, and this is a piece of fur. And if I rub the, the rod with the fur, then I can 
rub electrons from the fur and put them onto the rod. And then if we touch this sphere here, the two little pieces of aluminum foil separate, uh, demonstrating that, that both of them have acquired some negative charge, some electrons, and are now repelling each other. You can also use a, a very sensitive Braun electroscope to measure minute amount of minute amounts of charge. And basically, this is doing the same thing that the two pieces of aluminum foil were doing. But in this case, you have a piece of um, metal here and metal here, both uh, with the same charge repelling each other and causing the needle to, to shift. We can uh, do a similar thing with a piece of lucite and a piece of silk. And uh, the opposite happens with with this particular case, the um, electrons, instead of going from the fabric to the rod, go from the rod to the fabric. So this lucite rod loses electrons, which go into the silk. And so having lost some electrons now, the lucite rod is positively charged. And, and we can get... Um, get a movement of the Braun electroscope. And if we um, get this Braun electroscope charged up, actually what I'm going to do is charge it negatively and then try and negate that charge with some positive charge. Let's let it settle there until it's happy. And it looks like we've negated the charge. That's charge. It comes in two types, positive and negative, and they can cancel each other out. Thanks very much. Okay, an example, electronic ink. You may have devices with this or have heard of it or seen it. Very important application of electrostatics, the principles we've been talking about here. These clear microcapsules so these little uh, white beads that you see here um, I'm sorry, let's see. Enclose, uh, okay, I'm sorry. This is, a, this is a microcapsule, and inside of it are charged white beads, and these are negatively charged. So those, uh, those negatively charged white beads get attracted to positive. So if the pixel on the screen that you're interested in is charged positively, then those negatively charged white beads get attracted to that positive pixel. And so all these beads are down below, and when you look at it from above, you're going to see this blue liquid. So that will be the, the dark pixel, it will show up as blue, and then if you charge the pixel negative, then the beads are repelled from that negative surface and they go up to the top and as you look at it from above you'll see the white, white beads. And that's how electronic ink works. Pretty cool.